and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good evening. Welcome to another episode of the Lewis Sports Number. It is your boy Lewis coming back at you once again with another heavy hitter banger with yet another video. Smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, make sure those notifications are turned on, make sure you're sharing this on the social media platforms. Truly appreciate it. Hope everybody is having a wonderful evening here on Tuesday, soon to be Wednesday evening, and let's get on to the video. I will be coming back with live streams soon, just been a little bit busy in terms of my hectic schedule with a lot of things going on, but trust me, trust and believe your boy will be back, man. And like I said, appreciate all of my subscribers, be patient with me, I will be back, man. Much love and respect to y'all, man, truly appreciate it. All right, on to the video. I'm getting really sick and tired of this whole GOAT debate, and I've already made my top 10 list. If you guys wanna go check out the video, uh, I've already made a video. You can go back into my community post if you want to see what my top 10 players of all time are. And that's according to me <clears throat> in terms of my top 10. And uh, I try to be as informative as, a, as, excuse me, I try to be as informative as possible as to why I have the players ranked where I do. But the list is subjective. So whatever you decide that's on your list it can be your list, okay? The problem that I have is, this is really about Larry Bird and LeBron. And I made a video about two years ago saying, comparing Larry or LeBron, which one do you prefer? It's a matter of preference. I said I personally would go with Larry Bird. Now, about two years later, who do I think is the better player? They're like apples to oranges, right? What does Larry Bird have that LeBron doesn't have? I think he has a higher basketball IQ. You could probably say not by much. You could say way higher. Just depends on what your opinion is. Larry Bird is obviously a better free throw shooter. Larry Bird is a better shooter overall than LeBron. I think he was a very good passer. I think he was very underrated. And LeBron is a very good passer in his own right too. Some, especially his biased fan base, will say that he's even greater than Bird. Uh, I kind of tend to disagree with that. I think Bird is a better rebounder. I've said countless times that LeBron, to me, his rebounding is overrated. It's overrated. But with all that being said, why do I have LeBron above Larry Bird on my all-time list? It's really not that hard to figure out when you actually do research. And when you do research, what I realize is you would think that with how great Larry Bird was in the regular season, that it would translate to the postseason. And what I said in my top 10 greatest players of all time video is, is that Larry Bird's playoff performances have been vastly overrated. That's the reason I put LeBron above Larry Bird. When the moment, when the moment has counted, LeBron James has actually performed better than Larry Bird. And you can look up the numbers. You, you can look at the, you can look them up. You can look them up. LeBron has actually been better in the playoffs historically than Larry Bird has. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that Steph Curry, Steph Curry, who people have said is not clutch, and people have hung on to 2016 to say Curry is an overrated, not even a good playoff performer, which is just not true. That's a narrative that, that has been stuck on him since he underperformed in the 2016 NBA Finals. And then overall in the playoffs after the injuries. But my point being is that you would think that Larry Bird's play elevates in the postseason, and that's not necessarily true. He's had a lot of playoff series, especially in the early parts of his career, where he did not, you know, where he did not live up to the expectations that he's been known as Larry Legend. Which I still have him sixth on my all-time list. I just put LeBron above because LeBron has actually performed better in the playoffs when it's counted. Even though I think there's things that Bird can do that LeBron can't, there's things that LeBron can do that Larry Bird can't. So, again, it's a matter of personal preference. The reason that I have LeBron in my top five is, again, he has a top ten resume when we look up and down of what he's accomplished. Okay? He has four championships. He has four finals MVPs. Okay, so he played on super teams, and I get the whole thing. It's a reason that I've said countless times that LeBron will never, ever be the GOAT because I've said before, and I've even said this about Kobe, you can get them both to quit when the stacks are not in their favor. I've said that countless times. I don't care if the Kobe fans don't like it, and I was an avid Kobe fan myself, especially I was a Kobe fanboy at one point. And the LeBron fanboys aren't going to like it. But 
but that's just my personal opinion for what I assess. And yes, I think Kobe may be more skilled than LeBron James, but I think LeBron is a better overall player than Kobe. People are going to disagree and that's fine with me. My thing is, why are you getting so emotional over something that it made me try to understand over time when I did research and I started to do the eye test and I started to watch more and I started to really understand. I didn't feel that way a couple of years ago. This is the way that I've come to now. That's why I said that as great as this Kobe was, and I'm a huge fan of Kobe, I grew up, I love watching Kobe, there's reasons why I didn't put him in the top 10. It's not that I don't think he's a great player, he's just in the tier of where Dr. J, Oscar Robinson, Moses Malone, and Isaiah Thomas is at. Some people have Isaiah Thomas as a top 10 player. I got him just outside the top 10, and he was an honorable mention for me. But that doesn't take away the greatness of Oscar Robinson. It doesn't take away the greatness of Moses Malone. I think Moses Malone is the most, arguably the most underrated player in NBA history. It doesn't take away Dr. J. It doesn't take away Jerry West. These guys are all-time great legends, and we need to pay more respect to these guys. But the Jordan-LeBron debate has killed the other legends in the history of basketball. And what I want to educate people is that we need to learn about the history of the game. And what I'm starting to see is I'm starting to see young cats on YouTube starting watching highlights of players who played in the past to try to really understand how great they were because they don't know. I've heard guys say, you know, my era is John Moran, Dame Lillard, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and that nature. But now they're starting to watch highlights of other yes. players who played in the NBA in the past. And I said, in order to really have a true appreciation of the game, you need to learn about the past legends that helped make the game the way it is today. And shout out to uh, the Players Tribune and the Knuckleheads podcast with Darius Miles and Quint Rich and bringing in the big old Oscar Robertson. I'm so glad that we got to have him because he's one of the legends that I talk about that doesn't get mentioned enough. And he was one of the greatest to ever do it. And to hear his story especially how the game was played in his era compared to how it is today is obviously totally different. You don't have the technology. You don't have the, you know, the nutrition. Again, there's no advances. And what people have to understand about the game back then, if you look at the 80s and the 90s compared to today, today's era may have more skilled players, but I think what the 80s and 90s emphasized a lot more was execution and fundamentals. That's really not in today's game. Yeah, players are more skilled, but when it comes to execution and fundamentals, there's really not that in today's NBA, in my personal opinion, for what I've seen. And obviously, there's other guys who have different opinions on why they don't like the way the game is today. Larry Bird, 80s player. 80s player. Has came out and said that he respects the players that play today, and he has high regard for Klay Thompson. But getting back to LeBron and Larry Bird, that's the reason why I put LeBron above Larry Bird and he's in the top five on my list. That's why. It's because originally I had Bird above LeBron. So yeah, folks, in continuation, uh, that's why I have LeBron above Larry Bird because I said that when it comes to performances in the playoffs, LeBron has actually done performed a lot more better when you talk about output and outcome compared to Larry Bird. You see, I didn't even, I really didn't know that until I started to see some of the, some of the series that Larry Bird played in. I forgot what video I was watching, but I didn't realize that he underperformed in a lot of series where they had home court advantage. And I said, wow. I said, so Larry Bird doesn't perform as great as I thought in the postseason. Oh, it's kind of similar to Kobe in terms of they've had great moments in the playoffs, but the thing is they've underperformed more than what their greatness would tell you. Some people might not agree with that, but it is what it is. But that's why I have LeBron above Larry Bird. And the thing that kills me is that people say some people hear something that they don't agree with, then they'll run to another channel and then tell them about something that I said. And then they make a video talking about how all of a sudden I don't understand the game of basketball. You need to understand something. What I felt before is not how I feel now according to how I've researched and analyzed the game differently. And as I said before, if you want to put Kobe in your top five, that's your prerogative. I'm not going to argue with you as to why Kobe's not a top five player. Go ahead, I'm not going to argue with you as to why Kobe's not a top 10 player. I'm not doing that. 
what I've done is base my assessment on how I see the game and where I rank the players. Where I saw them before is not how I see them now, okay? So there's some things that have made me sway my mind, but that doesn't take away the greatness of Kobe, rest in peace. That doesn't take away greatness of any of the players, but I've been consistent as I said before. People can say what they want and they can call me a hater. I got LeBron as the fifth best player in NBA history, but in my personal opinion, he will never, ever, ever be the greatest of all time because he's doing it off of narrative. He knows that he cannot catch MJ. Some people are delusional thinking that he he's already surpassed him. Sorry, he has not surpassed him in any way and he's not ever going to. And LeBron should be content with that. He should just worry about trying to win another championship and just continuing his long storied great Hall of Fame career. That's it. Because comparing yourself to Jordan, that's just a whole nother stratosphere that you have to understand something. They did this with Kobe too. They compared him to Jordan when he won his fifth title. And you know what they were saying? If he won a sixth title, this was after 2010, is Kobe Bryant better than Michael Jordan? You have to understand something, people. The media creates narratives because they need something to talk about. Did any of those things, were, were they ever talked about until a player did something? See, because look at Shaq. He came out and said, well, if LeBron does this, wins a title, then he can eclipse Michael Jordan as the greatest player of all time. Hate, hate to break it to you, Shaq, but that's not happening. And it's not about the threat of holding Jordan's legacy. I think people have got it somehow twisted in their own way. You can believe LeBron James is the GOAT, but I said it before and I'll say it again. And that's why LeBron and Kobe are kind of similar in that aspect, <clears throat> in this aspect. You can get LeBron to quit and you can get Kobe to quit if the stacks and the chips do not fall in their favor. People are going to try to detail it and try to put context into the argument. You can do that if you want to, but at the, also at the same time, it's also called the bottom line too. So we can put context, but I've noticed that people tend to be biased when it comes to context over a certain player to who they like, to a player that they absolutely hate, that they can't stand, because they not only can't stand the player, they can't stand the fan base that comes with it either. So I'm going to be honest with you when I say that as well. So, like I said before, you don't have to agree with me that you don't think that LeBron is a top five player. You can have him out of your top 20. You can have him out of your top 100 if you want to because you dislike the guy. I'm on record as saying I don't like LeBron James. I think he acts like a, a diva uh, who acts who has this huge narcissistic ego that like he thinks he's better than everybody else. And shows me that he, to me, doesn't have the humility that I thought he once had when he first started with the Cavaliers. Go ahead, Azizi. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, let me put it to you this way. Do you ever really see me constantly make basketball videos as to pertaining to one particular player? Because honestly, I don't have a personal obsession like other people do on YouTube that make videos about a certain player that they don't like. That's just naturally unhealthy. I just do basically videos on what I see in terms of analyzing the game of basketball. That's it. Sorry about the background, but that's just the motorcycles going on in the background. But my point is, is that I just do the videos on basically on what I see. That's it. That's all. I, I, it ain't nothing personal. Like when you have to all of a sudden, quote unquote, discredit my basketball credibility and go on to another channel to tell a person that all of a sudden I, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about because I have somebody on my top five. I was like, why is it a personal obsession? That's showing emotional bias. That's showing emotional bias. I'm not emotionally attached to a player. You see, that's my point. Like when you get, when you personally obsess over a player that you don't know personally, or professionally, it's like, like what, what's the point in that? So that's my point. Like when I did about, when I said why LeBron is better than Larry Bird, I did it through the eye test and I did it through statistical data. And I even watched some games of Larry Bird in the early 80s. And he honestly did get outplayed and he actually underperformed in some of those. And that's why when you look at the bottom line, LeBron's actually outperformed Larry Bird in the playoffs. 
So that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to do this video just to kind of clarify why I put LeBron above Larry Bird on my list. Again, it doesn't take away the greatness of Larry Bird. They're all great players. But again, have a wonderful night, everybody. As always, man, thank you guys. Myself, Liz, Laugh, Love. Thank you guys for watching.